Hey, welcome to Victory Church Online. We're continuing our series, Hearing God's Voice. This is part two. Get ready to take some notes. How many of you are here to hear the voice of God? Amen. Welcome to Victory Church. We're so glad you're here. What would it really be like if you could hear the voice of God? I mean, what would it do for you as a person if you could discern his voice, if you could figure it all out? I mean, I can tell you this, you'd breathe easier. You'd have more peace. There'd be confidence in your life. I mean, you'd have a lot of faith. But I'm here this morning to tell you that you can hear from God. I said you can hear from God. Everybody sitting here can hear the voice of God. Now look, there are sound waves going on all the time here in this sanctuary. There are radio waves. There are TV waves. There are internet waves. Until you know how to tune into those, you'll never be able to connect with them. But there's also God's waves. They're coming through this sanctuary right now. And if you can tune in to his voice, you'll be able to connect with him in a way that you've never been able to connect with him in the past. But if you turn, tune into the wrong channel, it's never going to be God. I can tell you that. The same is true, I mean, with everything about God. God wants you to tune in to him. And this morning we're in part two of tuning into the voice of God. And again, I'm going to ask you, what would your life really be like if you were able to really tune in? I'm talking about dial in God in your life. What would it be like for you? I mean, what would it be like to discern the Holy Spirit and to know the voice of God, the wooings and the urgings and the stirrings and the little st still small voice? What would it be like for your life? I, I don't know about you, but for me, it's everything. In fact, hearing the voice of God is the basic thing that every Christian needs to have. Everybody needs to be uh, uh, straining their ear trying to hear God's voice. And I want you to know right now, God's not trying to hide from you. He's not concealing himself from you. He's not eluding you. In fact, he's trying to open up the doors to your heart. He's trying to open up the doors of your future. He's trying to open up the doors to you because he wants to speak to you. He wants to speak into your heart and into your spirit to guide you and to lead you, lead you and to give you some purpose in your life. How many of you want to hear from God? Amen. I'm talking to the right people. Many ask, does God still talk? Does he really still talk to people? Does he really? Will he really talk to me? And the answer is an overwhelming yes. You know, Christianity is the only religion where that God talks to you. Muhammad doesn't talk to you. Buddha doesn't talk to you. The millions of gods of the Hindu religion, they don't talk to you. It's the only religion where God will talk back to you. He'll speak to you. He'll speak into your heart. And Jesus made it abundantly clear that he will do it. Let me read it to you in John 10. In fact, I'm going to give you three translations on this because I want you to really kind of grasp what he's trying to say. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Another translation says, my sheep recognize my voice. And another translation says, my sheep are listening to my voice. And I started looking at all that the other day, and I began to realize that God, he, his sheep are to hear his voice, to recognize his voice, to listen to his voice. And when they do that, by the way, the reason why God wants you to listen, hear, and recognize his voice is so that you will follow him. Right now, the, the church is following the world because they don't hear the voice of God anymore. They hear the voice of politicians. They hear the voice of the media. They hear the voice of social media. They hear the voice of friends and others. They're not hearing the voice of God. No wonder you don't have power. No wonder the devil walks all over you. No wonder you don't have peace and joy and hope. No wonder, because we're hearing the wrong voices. Is there anybody in the house this morning? You know, you can walk in the path of God. You can. And if you want to, You've got to discern his voice. You've got to listen. You've got to hear. You've got to recognize that voice. And no matter what anyone tells you, God can speak to you. Listen, you can hear God's voice as clearly as Abraham could, as Moses could, as David could. You can hear the voice of God as well as Peter and Paul and all the others that you read about in the Bible. You can hear his voice just as clearly as they did. His voice has not changed. I want to show you this in Deuteronomy 4, verse 35 and 36. It says, to you it was shown that you might know that the Lord himself is God. God has said, he said, it was shown to you so that you would know that I'm God. Now watch this. 
He said, there's none other besides him. Verse 36, out of heaven, out of heaven, he let you hear his voice. I love this. Out of heaven, he let you hear his voice that he might instruct you. On earth, he showed you his great fire, and you heard his words out of the midst of the fire. I'm here to tell you again, God has a voice. He's trying to declare it to you. He's trying to speak to you. And you and I need to, we need to, we need to bend our ear. We need to strain our ear to hear his voice. Now, I want to give you three things this morning that might help you to know to hear his voice. Are you ready for these? Number one, listening is a learning process. Listening is a learning process. Some of you are not listening right now because you're on your phones. Now, hopefully you're taking notes. You're not looking for, thank God the Broncos aren't playing. Of course, who cares about the Rockies? (laughs) Who? Rockies who? (laughs) Listening is a learning process. Not every voice you hear is from the Lord. There was three rights on that, and everybody else was silent. If you're tuned into the wrong channel, you may think it's God, but it's not. Isn't that right? It's important to know when God's talking to you, when, when the devil's talking to you, when you're talking to yourself, you need to know the difference. Satan talks to you all the time. Did you ever figure that out? He talks to you all the time. It's called temptation. He's always talking to you and putting thoughts in your mind all the time about doing wrong, doing evil, those kind of things. You know, God gets blamed for a lot of things he never did. Some of the most dangerous words spoken are these. You know God told me to do that. I have heard more Christians over the years say, well, you know God told me. And you know God didn't tell you anything. Your mind may have told you something, but God never told you. You know, it's like people, you know, they say, well, God told me to do this after they've murdered three people. You know, God's not going to tell you to rob a bank. God's not going to tell you to steal a car. God's not going to tell you to get drunk. God's not going to tell you to take a bunch of drugs. God doesn't do that. That's not the spirit of God. That's not the voice of God. But we so, we so quickly say, you know, God told me. God told me. Do you know that one minute you can be talking to God and the next minute? Well, I'm, let me put it this way. God can be talking to you one minute and then the devil can talk to you the next. Did you know that? Can I show it to you in the Bible? Because... I want you to see how we have to learn how to hear the voice of God. Listening is a learning process. And God can speak to you one second, and then the devil can speak to you another. Remember the story of of, uh, when Jesus asked Peter, he said, who do you say I am? He said, well, he said in verse Matthew 16, he said, you're the Christ, the Son of God. He said, Jesus answered and said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Flesh and blood did not reveal that Jesus was the Son of the living God. It was the Spirit. He had to hear the voice of God to really know that Jesus was the living Son of God. So I want you to see that Peter knew who Christ was because he discerned the voice of God. He got the idea that he was the Son of God because God spoke to his Spirit. We'll talk about more about that in just a minute. But I want, you to wa- I want you to watch what happens a couple of seconds later. You know, because Jesus said to Peter, now, Peter, you know that I'm going to Jerusalem, and they're going to crucify me. I'm going to hang on a cross for the sins of mankind. And Peter says, ho, ho, hold it right there. That, no, 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 that's not going to happen. We're not going to let that happen. Here's what it says in verse 22. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him and saying such things as, heaven forbid, Lord, He said, this will never happen to you. And here's what Jesus said. He turned to Peter and said, get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view and not from God's. Look, the same guy, two different impressions within seconds. One minute he's he's saying, you're the son of God, the son of the living God. He said, no, no, you, you can't go down the cross. He was hearing the voice of the, of the devil. He also heard the voice of God. I mean, just like that. You know, it could happen to you. You hear God's voice one moment, then you hear the voice of the enemy the next. That's why we have to, look, 
listening is a learning process. We have to learn how to listen. And you've got to discern the voice of God. You know, uh, you have to train your ear to hear. In Job 33, 14, it says God speaks in many different ways. And we don't always recognize his voice. You know, God speaks in a lot of different ways. But we don't even train our ear to hear. You know, we, we get this idea of how God speaks in a booming voice. We see it on television and movies. That's not how he speaks. In fact, in my whole life, I've never heard the booming voice of God. Never. I've heard a still small voice of God. And I've had to strain to discern that it was him. It just didn't come out like that, like, like I'm talking to you right now. There, listen, if you want to... We're going, to have to, we're going to have to train ourselves to hear. We're going to have to learn to hear if we're going to listen. And the great story of this is in the book of 1 Samuel 3 about Samuel. You know, Samuel was a little boy. And one night he heard the voice, Samuel, Samuel. And he gets up thinking it was Eli, the priest, who was calling him. He said, sir, I'm here. He said, I didn't call you. He goes and lays back down in his bed a little while later, he hears a voice, Samuel, Samuel, and he gets up. He just knew it was Eli calling him. He goes and wakes him up. He said, I'm not calling you. And for the third time, he goes and lays down, and he, he awakens Eli, and Eli said, wait a minute. He said, he said I'm not calling. He said, that must be the voice of the Lord. He said, the next time you hear your name being called, why don't you say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. 1 Samuel 3, verse 9 says, go lay down and it shall be if he calls you that you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Verse 10, now the Lord came and stood and called at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And then the amazing part of this story is in verse 11. Because then it said, then the Lord spoke. It was then that the Lord spoke. When Samuel trained his ear to hear the still small voice of God, God began to speak. You want to hear the voice of God? Why don't you get still for just a little bit? Turn off everything in your life. Go sit in a closet. I mean, close the door. Make sure it's dark, whatever it takes. I mean, shut off the world for a while and say, Lord, I'm just going to try to listen for your voice. Listening is a learning process. Hearing, he, hearing uh, came when he taught himself to hear. Hearing came when he began to discern the voice of God. The, God spoke when he stopped long enough just to listen. He had to train his ear. God is ready to speak to you right now like he did Samuel. But the problem is you're not listening. It's a learning process. That's why Jesus said, the sheep follow him, John 10, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Number one, listening to God is a learning process. You have to pay attention. And when you do, is when he speaks. Now let me give you number two. God speaks to our spirit, not to our mind. Now, this is going to be a revelation for somebody here this morning because most of you think God speaks to your mind. No, God doesn't speak to your mind. He speaks to your spirit. And if you don't grasp this, you're going to miss the voice of God for the rest of your life because God doesn't talk to me up here. He talks to me down here. He talks to me in my spirit, man, because we can't always hear God with our mind. God doesn't speak to our mind. He speaks to our spirit. And if we live by the natural man, mind, the natural mind will fool you. Because your mind has all kinds of ideas. It has all kinds of thoughts. It has all kinds of solutions. But that doesn't mean it's God. Just because it feels good doesn't mean it's God. Let me give you an example. Because God doesn't always, listen, God doesn't always hear, we don't always hear what God is saying. Because he doesn't always speak to our mind. Let me give you the example of this. I have a pastor friend who one morning on a Monday morning, they had been counting our big church. And a gunman came into the church. True story held him up, and there he was with his hands up, and his, one of the assistants had their hands up, his secretary had her hands up. He was going to rob the church of all that money. It was a lot of money. 
He kept saying, that's not a real gun. Pointed right at him. It's not a real gun. I mean, he kept thinking, that's, not a, that's a water gun. That's not a real gun. That's not a real gun. And he put his hands down and began to walk toward the gunman. And boom, boom, boom. Shot him four times and shot his assistant two times. You know what? You know what he said? The pastor said, he learned quickly what the voice of God doesn't sound like. He said, it doesn't sound like your mind. You'll never know when you're in a life or death situation if you don't know the voice of God. You'll never know how to get out of a life or death situation unless you know the voice of God. I'll give you an example, a personal one. Years ago, I was on Interstate 10 between Baton Rouge and Lake Charles, Louisiana, Interstate 10. There's a section, some of you know what it's called, it's called the Atchafalaya Basin, a million acres of swamp and marsh. And this road, Interstate Interstate 10, there's 18 plus miles that's elevated above the marsh, the swamp. There's no pull-offs. There's some shoulders, but there's no pull-offs. Now I was driving across it one time, and the fog got so bad that, I mean, you could hardly see a car in front of you, and something said to my inside, not my mind, but my spirit, pull over onto the shoulder. It was the Lord. It was the Holy Spirit. And my first thought was, I need to keep going. I got a lot to do. I got to go places. But I felt that impression so great in my spirit, man, I pulled over on the shoulder, which wasn't that wide. And I'm, as soon as I did, I saw these brake lights, and there had been a pile up, and I kind of drove up alongside of it and got ahead of it. And behind me were 18-wheelers and big trucks. I mean, they slammed into that, that, those stop cars, and five or six people would have been killed. I would have been one of those fatalities had I not heard the voice of God. You have to listen. Listening is a learning process. God doesn't speak to your mind. He speaks to your spirit. I'm hoping you're getting some of this because I'm going to try to explain it the best I can today. I mean, I was uh, doing some mission work in West Africa and Nigeria with Rick Zachary, who was one of the missionaries that was there. And, and uh, we were going to a village and we had to use a motorcycle because there were really no roads. It's a jungle. And so he said, why don't you drive this time? So I'm on there and he's on the back. And so we get to this rickety bridge, probably about 60, 70 feet across. I mean, just like slabs of wood going this way and a couple of pieces of wood this way in case a car ever wanted to drive on it. And I get there and I stop. Rick says, come on, let's go, let's go. I said, something's not right. He said, come on, we have stuff to do, let's go. I said, no, no, something's not right. Something on the inside, I didn't know what it was. Something on the inside of me said, something's not right. But Rick kept, you know, hitting me in the ribs with his fist and everything else trying to get me to go. I finally put it in gear. And as soon as I did, halfway across that bridge, it was as if something grabbed the handlebars of that motorcycle. And we went off that bridge about two stories down. I'm so thankful there was water there. I come up out of the water I didn't see Rick. I thought the motorcycle had fallen on him and had pinned him under the water. See, I want you to know something. I heard a voice, but I didn't heed that voice. It almost cost me my life again. I didn't hear that voice. I'm sorry, I heard that voice, but I didn't heed that voice. One paying any attention to it. And God was speaking to me. Listen, you've got to know his voice. Listen for his voice and recognize his voice. God doesn't speak to your mind. He speaks to your spirit. He bypasses your mind because your mind is so messed up with things of this world. Come on, am I right about this? God speaks deep within you with a little nudge, an urging, a red flag. You know, an unusual prompting. Next week, I'm going to share with you the ways that God speaks to you. Because you need, right now, I'm telling you where he speaks to you, but I'm going to show you the ways he speaks to you next week. Is that all right? When we, when we begin to trust our insides, we begin to trust the Holy Spirit who's trying to lead us. See, a lot of you would not be in the trouble you're in right now if you just listen. It's a learning process. But if you could ever get hold of this thought that, that God doesn't speak into my mind. My, look, my, spirit can, my mind can comprehend what the Spirit is saying. But God speaks to me down here, not up here. 
There's a difference between your mind and your conscience. Your conscience is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, how many times has your mind said, this is do that, this is do it. I mean, that's awesome, let's go do that. But your conscience is saying, wait a minute, that's wrong. Has that ever happened to you? Well, that's the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's the difference between your mind and your conscience or your spirit man. Look, it's not how God speaks to you as much as where God speaks to you. Now, when I talk about where God's, I'm not talking about where God's speaking to you in the mountains or in your car or in the wilderness or in the valley or someplace like that. I'm talking about where he speaks to you right now and it's in your spirit. That's where he speaks to you. God is a spiritual being and we are spiritual beings in a body. That's what we are. Most Christians are led by their head, by their emotions by their feeling, by their thoughts. But I want you to look at this, Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Look, God assures us and talks with us in our spirit. He bears witness in our spirit. In other words, there's joint agreement. That's what that word bear witness is. It means to give a testimony. You know, it's like when you first got saved... And you heard this little voice saying, you're my child. Now, there was something on the inside of you that says, yeah, that's right. You see, what was happening is your your spirit was bearing witness with God's spirit that you were a child of God. See, that's how you hear the voice of God. It's not up here. It's down in here. Because the devil comes saying, no, you're not really saved. You just said a bunch of words. That wasn't right. All these kind of things. Because he's trying to appeal to your mind. God's trying to appeal to your spirit. Be cautious about thinking that God always speaks to your mind. Too many Christians claim that every thought they get is from God. Just because it's a good idea or spiritual, seems like the right thing to do, it doesn't mean it's God. I want you to think about this. Let me see if I can share this with you. John 7, 38 says, He who believes in me, Jesus is speaking, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, he said, out of his heart, or out of his belly, depending on which, which rev, uh, translation you read, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. He didn't say, out of your mind will flow rivers of living water. He didn't say, out of your body will flow rivers of living water. He said, out of your belly, out of your heart, the innermost being will flow rivers of living water. That means there's a continuous active flow of God's spirit that's trying to flow through you. It's not trying to appeal to your mind trying to appeal to your spirit. And your mind can comprehend what is in your spirit. My mind can comprehend what my spirit man's telling me. He can do that. We hear the thoughts of God through our spirit. This is the secret of hearing the voice of God. Are you, are you getting this or do I need to start all over again? I'll do it if I need to. My goal is to help you hear the voice of God. And I think we've got it all wrong. The world teaches you to use your intellect and to use your knowledge and to use all these kind of things. God's trying to tell you to use wisdom, use your spirit. It's on the inside of you. God communicates through our spirit because the devil is the one who uses our mind. Who do you think puts all those thoughts in there? Who thinks put all those imaginations and high thoughts and all those kind of things? You got to remember the devil wars against your mind. He comes against your mind. He blinds the mind. He confuses the mind. He appeals to the mind. Go read your Bible and you'll see all the things he does to your mind. He can't mess with your spirit, man, because that's in the likeness of God. Paul says, as many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. We are to be led by the spirit, not by the flesh, not by the mind, not by our bodies, not by our emotions. And if your decision for life comes first from your mind, you're taking a big chance. Big chance. Too many decisions have been made from their mind. Too many people here in this sanctuary watching online. You've made decisions based on what you thought was a good thing, and now you're in a mess. Or you make a decision, and you want God to bless what your mind made a decision to do. By the way, God is not obligated to support you in the place he's not at. Think about that for a second. God is not a mind. God is a spirit. We have to be spirit conscious. Now, I'm going to show you this. Maybe this will help you, and then I'm going to go to the third point. We're going to close. Listen to this. Proverbs 20, verse 27, it says, The spirit of the man, the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of the heart. It says, The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. 
That means that God will guide us through our spirit. The spirit of man means the inward part of a man. Are you understanding the difference between your mind and your spirit, man? I, am, am I, I'm trying to make it clear as I can. But here, Solomon says, the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. In other words, it's the spirit of a man that comprehends what God is doing or what belongs to God. It's where we find the voice of God. But I want you to see something David said about this in Psalm 18. David said, for you will light my lamp. Now, now Solomon said that the spirit of man is the lamp. And then David said, but God, you will light my lamp. My spirit is a lamp, but Lord, you come along to light it. You light it. Let me ask you a question. If you're going to get God to give you light on anything or get a revelation on anything, where's it going to come from? It's going to come from your mind. It's going to come from your body. It's not where the light is. It's going to come from your spirit. Right? If God wants to give you any light on healing or your finances or decisions you have to make, you know, he's going to speak to you deep down in your spirit. It's not going to come, I mean, your mind's going to comprehend it, but your mind's not going to come up with the ideas. I sure hope you're following me. I've asked the Holy Spirit to open your hearts this morning so that this thing would sink into you because there's nothing more than I, that I want for you than for you to hear God's voice. It's the basic element of all Christians that we hear his voice, hear his voice. Let me go to number three because I'm, I've got just a couple of minutes. Let your spirit lead you. Okay, li listen. Listening is a learning process. Number two is that God speaks to your spirit, not your mind. And number three, you need to let your spirit lead you. No matter what you do or where you go, the decisions you make, you need to let the spirit, your spirit lead you because that's the voice of God. It's the voice of God. Don't consult your mind if you have a witness in your spirit. God is going to lead you, as I've been saying, not from here. Some of you miss God by 18 inches because it's down in here. It's where the spirit of man is, the heart of man. You know, there are times I do things in life and, you know, I just, I have a peace in my spirit, a peace down here, even though on the outside it doesn't look good. But there's something on the inside of me that just kind of, I just have peace. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's my conscience. And then there are times when I don't have that. And I know that's the Holy Spirit. I mean, we don't have to be led by hunches or by guesses. That's what the world does. There's been times that Jeannie and I have been in places, and I just felt like we don't need to be here. Something's not right about this place. And we either excuse ourselves or get up and leave. We did that at a Walmart one time, and I mean, shortly after, there was a, a shooting killed a bunch of people. We could have been there. But I heard a little gentle wooing on the inside of me saying something's not right. I mean, I, I mean, sometimes you get with the wrong people or around the wrong people and you hear this little word on the inside of you. Something's not right here. Something's wrong here. You don't know what it is, but your conscience is saying, what are you doing here? Has that ever happened to you before? Like, what are you doing? Why are you here? That's happened to me so many times. And I've learned to try to heed the voice of God because I've missed it many times too. I'm still in the process of learning how to hear his voice. But I'm sharing with you what I understand about the voice of God. Psalm 18 verse 33 says, He makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me in high places. Maybe this will help you understand a little bit better. He makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me in high places. How many of you want to be in a high place? I do. Well, he, you got to have feet like hinds feet. You know, they say that a mountain goat or a hind, that when they take a step, when their front feet are secure, when their back foot comes up and moves forward, it's in the exact same spot as the front foot. So they know, whether it's a hind or a mountain goat or whatever, they know that if they have secure, if they're secure on their front feet, when they take a step with their back feet, they know it's going to be secure. They're not going to slip. So what does it mean? Let, let's just say that the two front feet are the Holy Spirit. 
When you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, suddenly you, you, you're, you're not going to slip. You kind of feel like you know where God wants you to go and what he wants you to do. And so, you know, when you begin to move your next foot forward, can I tell you what happens? You're not going to slip or fall. In fact, your whole body and your whole mind and everything else is going to follow along because you got good footing because the Holy Spirit revealed it to you. Make sense? David said, because I've learned to let my spirit make my body follow me, God can lead me to high places. God wants to lead you to high places, but the problem is you don't have your two front feet in a secure place because you're not hearing the voice of God, you're hearing the voice of the world. Many times God will lead us and tell us what to do, and then we go to discuss it with somebody else. Come on, you're, you've done that. I know. Don't look so holy out there. And then they start to talk you out of what God told you to do or what he shared with you. A good example is marching around the, the, the walls of Jericho. You know, the, you know the reason why God said don't say anything to each other? Don't say anything at all? He, he said because some bubba head's going to be there trying to talk you out of it. Hey, yeah, have you ever walked around a wall and they fall down because you walk around it? It's never going to happen. I mean, Jim said that wall's not going to fall down. I mean, who, who believes that kind of stuff? This is a waste of time. And after a while, you start believing everything they say because you're listening to the thoughts of man instead of the thoughts of God. He said, don't even talk to anybody because when you do, somebody's going to come along and try to talk you out of it. It's like the reason why Jesus told the leper, he said, you're healed. He said, go show yourself to the priest. He said, but don't say anything to anybody. Why did he tell him that? Because he went a long way and, he, and somebody stopped and said, hey, where are you going? I'm going to the priest because I'm healed. Well, you don't look healed to me. You got leprosy all over your body. That's a joke. Who told you that you'd be healed? Well, Jesus told me. He said, well, I don't know about him, but all I know is if you go do this, you're going to look like a fool. But what that leper didn't know is that the Bible says that he was healed as he went because he heard the voice of God. Sometimes you're going to be touched as you go, touched as you take a step. But all of it matters, all that it matters is that you hear the voice of God, the voice of God. The voice of God is a learning process. He will speak to your spirit, not your mind. And you have to learn how to let your spirit lead you when your mind is trying to talk you out of it. Amen. That's my three points for this morning. Did you get anything out of this? Is this helping you at all? <clears throat> Next week, I'm going to show you how God speaks to you. Right now, I'm showing you where he speaks to you. If you don't get this, it doesn't matter how he speaks to you. If you can't understand that he's going to speak to you from the inside right here. And I'm praying that God is going to open up your heart this week, maybe even right now, to begin to to begin to discern that voice that's on the inside of you right here. Some of you have that voice right now because you feel like there's some things not right in your life. You know it. And you feel, you feel conviction by it. That's the Holy Spirit. That's, that's your conscience. It's the voice of God. And he's trying to nudge you and woo you and urge you to respond. Some of you have never given your heart to Christ and you know that you go to church on Sunday, but you know, you know that you've never really prayed a prayer. Ask Christ to come and save you from your sins. Can I tell you what that is? That's the voice of God. It starts down in here. Your mind comprehends it, but there's something on the inside that's telling you to respond. Are you that person this morning? If so, you're hearing the voice of God and you didn't even know it. You're hearing the voice of God this morning. And it may just be the beginning of the journey to hear his voice every day because he'll speak to you all day, every day. He'll speak to you about things in your life, about things, the right path, the wrong path, the right decision, the wrong decision, the thing that's holy, the thing that's not holy. He'll speak to you because God is a God that loves you. Just close your eyes for just one second. Who would allow me to pray for you this morning? You feel that little nudge, that urging on the inside of you that some things aren't right. You need to make them right. Slip your hand up. Amen. Amen. There's hands all over this sanctuary. You can put them down. Some of you are not right with God. 
You've never been right with God. You go to church, we're so thankful. But today is your day. The Holy Spirit is nudging you right now. Telling you that you need to give your heart, your whole life to Him. Not just part of it. If that's you, you want me to pray for you, slip your hand up. I want to pray for you. Just one hand, there's another one. Is there anyone else? Today's your day. My Lord, my God, I thank you that this day, oh, I see some hands up right now. Father, I'm praying that this day, you will reveal yourself to us with that still small voice in our spirit man, not just in our mind. Our mind will comprehend it. Lord, deep down in our soul, deep down in our, our spirit, deep down in our heart, we can sense and discern it's you. There are some who said, I need to make some things right. There are some who lifted their hands to say, I need to give my whole life to you. Lord, I know that when they raised their hand, you responded instantly to them. By your spirit, you've already started touching them. Lord, would you deliver them? Would you free them? Today, Lord, we give you glory that you're saving them from a fiery hell because they finally listened to their spirit instead of their mind. Lord, I ask you to bless this, your people. I'm praying that you'll help every single person here to bend their ear, to train their ear to listen. Lord, that we could be led by your spirit. Lord, that we would hear in our spirit, man, not just in our mind. And Lord, we rejoice with peace and joy and confidence and faith in the precious name of Jesus. John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Be encouraged. It takes some time to learn to hear God's voice. It's a process. We'll see you here Sundays at 10 a.m. See you next week. Thank you.